Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting Lesson. In this video, we will be moving on to step six, which was preparing an adjusted trial balance. Uh, so far, we have done all of these other steps. So if you are looking specifically at this video, you might want to go back to some of the prior videos to see how we got here. And as always, if you need the blank sheets, they will be available on our website, which is linked in the description. So step six, we are going to be completing this adjusted trial balance. We already have the names of all of the accounts and all of their account numbers. We're simply going to now be putting in those debit and credit balances. So let's move to our general ledger. And from here, we will be able to pull all of the new balances. So first one is cash. Remember, for each ledger account, we will simply be going to the balance column and taking the most recent debit or credit balance from that account. So for cash, it has a debit balance of 367,200. And we'll simply put it in on the debit side. Accounts receivable, that had a 75,000 debit balance. And then just keep going. Supplies. No longer 3,000, we updated that. 2,000 debit. Prepaid rent, 12,000 debit. Equipment has a 56,500 debit balance. And accumulated depreciation, notice now we're going over to the credit side simply because the ledger account for that account went over to the credit side. And also keep in mind as you're putting these in, we do want the balances to reflect the normal balance in each account. So like, for example, at this accounts payable one, if we uh, notice that accounts payable had a debit balance, but we already know that accounts payable is a liability account and liabilities have a normal balance of credit, we know something's off. We made a mistake somewhere. Uh, salaries payable, 500. Unearned revenue, 40,000. Cash dividends payable is zero. Common stock is 25000 Paid in capital, 135000 And um, actually, one thing that uh, I've had some students ask me before is if an account has a balance of zero, does it have to be on the adjusted trial balance? Technically, it doesn't, but I would recommend taking a look at your textbook and seeing which method they prefer. Moving on to preferred stock, 100000 Paid in capital in excess of par, 105000 We don't have any paid in capital from sale of treasury stock, but I know that is a capital account, so I'm going to put a zero there. Retained earnings currently has a balance of zero, but don't worry, it won't for long once we get to uh, posting our closing entries a little bit later in the accounting cycle. Treasury stock is a 20000 debit balance. Cash dividends has an 8,000 debit balance. Uh, cash dividends for preferred, 2,000 debit. Consulting revenue, 122,000 credit. Salary expense, 3,500 debit. Rent expense, 6,000 debit. Supplies expense, 1,000 debit. Depreciation expense, 700 debit. And just a couple more. 13,500 debit. 800 and zero. And the beautiful thing is the fact that our debits and credits equal. Now keep in mind, if they do equal, it's not a guarantee that you did everything correctly. But if they don't equal, that way you know that you did something incorrect somewhere in the system, right? So you'll have to go back and find your error. Um, usually if it is off, if it's just one error, one way that you can find it is to take the difference of these two accounts and then either look for any transaction that has to do with a, di a difference of that amount or double it, look for a transaction that has a difference of that amount or sometimes cut it in half. Occasionally, we can find the source of the error by cutting that difference in half. All right, that's it for the adjusted trial balance. In our next video, we will be moving on to preparing our financial statements. Uh, this is uh, might be broken up into a couple different videos just because there's so many financial statements here. But in the meantime, keep practicing. Uh, visit our website if you want to pull the blank sheets. And until then, happy studying.